When we speak of social organization, one of the most important points to take away is that roles and statuses in institutions, like individual people themselves, aren't independent of one another, but interdependent. It requires a child to be a parent. It requires a student to be a teacher. It requires decades of building respect for your leadership skills across the community to become a leopard skin chief. And making the transition from student to graduate requires the cooperation of hundreds of other people in a bureaucratic structure called a university. A bureaucracy is a hierarchically organized set of formal statuses, each assigned highly specific roles, all designed to work together to ensure effective functioning by complex organizations. People in, bureaucra in bureaucracies each have a particular authority according to their specific status. Authority here refer refers to the ability to exert specific forms of control by virtue of the formal office the person holds. A professor, for example, is authorized by her position to give students grades for her class. Even the provost and president of the university can't overturn those grades, although they might conceivably use their power over promotion and pay to influence a professor. In modern societies, bureaucratic structures are among the most common kinds of social groups. Governments, business corporations, nonprofit organizations are all bureaucracies. Yet the very formality and complexity of bureaucratic organizations, which enables them to be efficient and effective, also creates problems. This formality and complexity can be extremely frustrating for those outside the bureaucracy, including those persons and groups the organization is supposed to serve. Formality and complexity can also create opportunities for bureaucrats to manipulate their positions for their own personal benefits, taking bribes, for example, or cutting deals with other people in positions of power. Bureaucracies are an ancient form of social organization. Complex societies probably cannot exist without bureaucracies. Common as they are, however, humans have invented many other forms of social organization. Let's look at some of them. One common form of social organization is friendship. Friendship involves close ties between at least two people in which the ties are informal, voluntary, and involve interpersonal interaction. Friendship is expressed by different behaviors in different societies. Among these Mambila men of Nigeria, for example, drinking beer from the same calabash is a sign of friendship. Although uncommon in Europe and North America, in many societies around the world, friendship is indicated by holding hands. In many Middle Eastern countries, friendship is a crucial form of social organization comprising networks of support. A group of female friends is called a shilla. Because women traveling alone are seen as risking both physical and moral danger, members of a shilla will travel together to shop, to socialize, and to go to school. Membership in a shilla thus functions, among other things, to extend women's social mobility. Some forms of social organization are based on age. Two forms of classifying people by age are age grades and age sets. An age grade is a period of life a person passes through which has specific rights and duties associated with it. Most societies have some form of age grade system. In the United States, infants are held to different standards than adolescents who have fewer rights than adults and so forth. Our age grade Classifications are vague, though, compared to those of some other societies. Among the Oromo of Ethiopia and Kenya, for example, there is a highly developed age grade system called the Gada. Male Oromo organize their social and political life around a series of five generation grades which assign obligations as well as rights to members of the society. As boys pass from one grade to another, they undergo an initiation rite and are taught the duties and behaviors appropriate to their new roles. Through Gada, many socio-political functions were carried out. For example, the system operated as an educational institution with those elders who had completed all five grades, called Yuba, acting as instructors and advisors to the lower grades. The system worked also as a judicial institution by assigning the people in the fourth age grade, called Luba, roles as arbitrators and counselors who enforced the national law in all of their local communities. Age grades are very different than age sets. In age grades, the levels are fixed and people pass through them, from child to bachelor to young man to mature man to elder, for example. In age sets, people of about the same age are organized into social groups while they're still children. Each set usually has a name. The individuals in the age set grow up and mature together, 
And the age set serves as an important community that can support one another economically and politically as they mature and become ever more important members of society. Age sets are very common among indigenous peoples in South America and Africa. Secret societies are non-kin forms of social organization that initiate members into a social group that's marked by secret knowledge. Secret societies were important because society, uh, most of the societies in which secret organizations originated were primarily organized by kinship. The secret societies cut across family and clan groups. Some secret societies accepted only men, some only women, and some both. The term secret in a secret society usually refers to knowledge possessed by initiates, not necessarily to membership. Persons entering secret societies um, undergo initiation rites. They can subsequently rise in ranks within the society, but the society also authorizes them to perform certain public duties, like supervising ritual performances or policing public behavior. Secret societies uh, are common among the Mende, the Sherbro, the Capella, and other indigenous people living in what today are the African nations of Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, Liberia, and Guinea. But secret societies are not a form of social organization exclusive to these places. Yet another common form of social organization is fictive kinship. Fictive kinship refers to social relations between unrelated persons that model some of the rules of formal kinship. A classic example is the Latin American institution of uh, comptrasgo, or co-parenthood. In this case, a relationship is created when a lower-ranked married couple asks a higher-ranked person to serve as their child's godfather or godmother at the child's baptism. If the higher-ranked person agrees to take part in the baptism ritual, it creates a special social bond between the families. The family can turn to their child's godparent in times of need, and they'll be expected to support any political activities the godparent requests of them. Compadrazgo is one form of, of patron-client relationship, or clientage, a formal social relationship in which members of a high-ranking group, the patron, establishes a social affiliation with a member of a low-ranking group, the client. In clientage, the patron gives loans, offers of employment, help with education, or similar favors to the client in return for social and political favors from the client. This is usually understood locally as a mutually beneficial relationship, but it's important to recognize that it usually justifies and reinforces an asymmetrical social hierarchy. But it's a cultural system, not just an economic and political one. The system of obligations that exists between the patron and the client is a moral, not just a monetary one. So, for example, even if clients become wealthy, they never lose their classification as clients, and they're usually expected to behave in a subordinate position to their patrons throughout their lives. Patron-client institutions are common in societies around the world where there is a small, wealthy class of landowners and factory owners, for example, and a much larger group of working-class people. In classical Rome, clientage was considered an essential part of the political system, from which we inherit our phrase quid pro quo, meaning an exchange of favors. Not all patron-client relations are built around fictive kinship. What makes Campadrasgo a case of fictive kinship is the Christian rite of baptism. In Christian teaching, the rite of baptism creates a real spiritual link between a child and its godparents, who are supposed to ensure the child's spiritual welfare. This God-parent-God-child relationship becomes socially realized between the two sets of parents, who will now refer to one another by kinship terms. Their co-parenting ties, once established, give the natural parents the right to call on the godparents for material assistance and legal support. In return, their obligation is to support the political activities of the godparents and to work for them if they require it. Here's the takeaway. All societies are faced with three basic problems of social organization. First, the production of uniformity. Societies must be able to have sets of widely shared cultural meanings and understandings in order for members to work cooperatively and effectively. Second, the organization of diversity. Uniformity is always incomplete, so societies must be able to organize behavior in spite of individual or microcultural differences in cultural beliefs and understandings. Third, social reproduction. Societies must be able to reproduce themselves biologically and culturally. 
The problem of uniformity is how do we, as a society, create institutions that ensure each member of a society will act sufficiently like the others to ensure predictable behavior, coherent communication, and cooperative activity. The problem of diversity is how do we set the boundaries of acceptable and appropriate diversity and sanction people who go too far in one direction or another. And the problem of reproduction is how do we ensure each new generation will be sufficiently like the previous generation to allow for cultural continuity. Humans have developed many different ways to organize themselves in order to manage these basic problems of social order, disorder, and continuity. The forms of social organization I've described here, bureaucracy, friendship, age grade, age set, secret society, fictive kinship, and clientage, are just a few of the myriad creative ways humans have found to culturally solve these problems.